Do you need a NAS? No, not a NAS. We all have one of those. NAS. Network Attached Storage. I know it probably sounds a little bit boring, but we have more need for storage than ever, with huge libraries of photos, videos, games, and just general stuff. Not to mention the migration we've all done from high capacity hard drives to speedy SSDs. Case in point, my personal laptop, a MacBook Air with only 256 gig of storage. It's ridiculous. It should come as absolutely no surprise then that most of us will need to buy more storage, but just adding more external USB drives or upgrading your cloud storage isn't always is a great idea. So today I'm going to attempt to make the boring exciting and actually explain why most households probably are going to be better off getting a NAS. But we're going to go through all of the pros, all of the cons, so buckle up and get your NAS, I mean your ass ready, is going to be a, well I don't want it to be a bumpy ride, a very smooth ride, right after a short word from this video sponsor. Intel Gamer Days is back for 2025, and it's a great time to upgrade your battle station. There are huge savings to be had on devices powered by Intel, with crazy high frame rates delivered by the second generation of Intel Core Ultra Mobile CPUs, with greater power efficiency for longer battery life and quieter operation. If you're more team desktop, then Intel is also discounting its Core Ultra lineup here too, letting you game on up to 24 cores for less. Intel has also partnered with EA on the upcoming Battlefield 6, and those buying a qualifying Intel laptop or CPU can get a copy of the game for free when it launches later this year. Check out the Intel Gamer Days deals for yourself by clicking the link down below. Let's start then with the basics. What exactly is a NAS and why would you want one? Well, put simply, network attached storage is just a series of drives that are connected to a low power computer that connects to your PC, laptop, TV and more over your local area network. You can create one yourself on the cheap from old hardware or use a pre-built enclosure like the ASUS Tor NAS we're using here. In fact, this one is actually freshly made for our very own editor Carl, with three 18TB Seagate Ironwolf drives. This means that we're going to have a whopping 36TB of storage that Carl can back up to, and I can remotely access whenever I need to use some of his rendered files. At this point though, you're probably thinking that PC-centric can't do basic maths. I said 36, not 54TB, but we've got three hard drives. Well, the reason for this is all about redundancy, because unlike a single drive that you can put in your system, if that fails, then you know, it's gone essentially. You might have to go to data recovery and hopefully you can get it back, but the drive has gone down. Whereas by using a NAS and then using what we call RAID, and my one is, or I should say our one, it's actually at Carl's, is set to RAID 5. This means when you're using three hard drives, if one of them goes down, as long as you get to it in time and you put a new hard drive in, it can actually rebuild the array of that data without losing anything, which is fantastic. And this redundancy is one of the key reasons why having a NAS is so useful. It just gives you a little bit of extra protection that you wouldn't get, as I say, just by having a single drive. Though I should very strongly stress that this isn't going to save us in the event of a fire, floods, any sort of mechanical failure to the whole unit, so any mission critical files that we have will also need to be backed up elsewhere. I think for most people though, the main advantage that you're going to have with a NAS is purely just that your files are always available. You've not got to physically have it connected to your PC, as long as it's connected to either the Wi-Fi or obviously Ethernet for best performance, you can access all of your files, and this could be like a phone, could be a tablet, TV, again, doesn't matter what it is, and assuming you set it up correctly, you can also do this completely off-site as well over the internet. Another advantage that you'll find is that your computer can be set up to read from the drive directly. Just map the network drive, then most applications can read and write as if it was directly connected. So yeah, it really is pretty simple and straightforward. It's a hard drive connected to the internet. Not the most sexy product in the world. But ultimately, the question is, why would you want this and to pay all of the money to get started when you could just grab a really cheap external drive or obviously use Google Drive, iCloud, OneDrive? The main reason really would be all around flexibility and resilience. Unless you're willing to leave your your PC on all of the time and set up a permanent file share, your drives won't be accessible when you leave the home. And unlike any of the online drives, it works offline. So if your internet goes down, you can still access your files over the local network. Plus, don't forget you spent years getting rid of all of those noisy hard drives on your computer, and your laptop might not even be user upgradable with anything. So having large capacity drives hidden away in a NAS out of earshot really is a great little bonus. And whilst of course this isn't going to be an issue to everybody, there are plenty of people that don't want their be beta. Don't want their data backed up in the cloud owned by Google, Microsoft, Apple. They really want to kind of have everything in house and that's obviously where a NAS comes in. And I also want to point out that when I was planning this video I've currently got the NAS downstairs backing up all of my files so it really would have looked better on this desk rather than the box. But you're just gonna have to deal with it. 
Then of course, there's the cost factor. And I mean, okay, buying an additional drive for your PC is always gonna be the cheapest way to add more storage, but that has no resilience, and again, isn't always available. So for accessibility or backups, that only really leaves a cloud drive solution. And I'm sure this will come as absolutely no surprise to anyone, but these companies know exactly what they're doing. Small amounts of storage are very cheap just to get you used to using them. It's all very simple, it's a great solution, right? But as soon as you start talking in terabytes, serious storage, the price goes up dramatically. And having a NAS can be way, way cheaper in actually a surprisingly short space of time, all without the fear of losing files if you downgrade your plan. But hang on a second and slow your roll. This is not a sponsored video for an ASUS store or Seagate or anything like that. Massive thank you to you guys for actually supplying the NAS and the drives, but I wanna be very clear that a NAS is not going to be the right solution for everybody, and there are some serious downsides. For example, whilst they absolutely can be a lot cheaper for high capacity users, if you only need a terabyte of storage or perhaps less, it's a rather expensive solution to set up and secure multiple hard drives for such a small amount of space. Make no mistake, NASes are incredibly easy to install. Just grab your NAS out of the box, add the drives into the drive caddies, slide into place, turn it on, and wait for everything to sync together. But the thing to bear in mind is that the actual speed that you're going to get when you're either reading or writing files will vary massively depending on what you invest in and the infrastructure that you have or that you are going to upgrade to. Because the NAS itself is obviously just a chassis, but this will have like a processor and RAM inside, and the faster it is, the faster speeds it can handle. Then also what you can physically put inside of it. I mean, can it support SSDs or is it just limited to hard drives, for instance? But then also you've got to think about your networking because if you're going to plug this in obviously to your router are you going to be accessing this over wi-fi which could be fine for what you're trying to use it for or could be slow if you're a little bit more demanding do you only have one gig ports do you have two and a half do you have 10 there's quite a lot of factors to think about for example for our needs it is a little bit more advanced but we've actually added two ssds into the nas for use as a cache meaning carl can quickly copy files to it and use the speed of the ssds and then they're transferred to the slower hard drives at a later time but this will only work properly if the cache is large enough to actually take the files we're trying to transfer but then also the transfer speed the way we're connected to the nas is fast enough to accommodate those speeds because most networks are probably using a single gigabit connection and that's going to cap you out at around about 125 megabytes a second, which actually isn't that fast. Not for an SSD anyway. Ultimately, if we really want to get the maximum performance out of this, we're going to have to use at least a 10 gig LAN, but if we want to go all in, you can actually combine two on this ASOS Torn NAS for a total of 20 gigabits a second. This means more cost, more networking equipment, and more knowledge if lots of users need high-speed access. Personally speaking, as I say, we're going to be upgrading to this new Wi-Fi 7 router from Netgear, and it's going to allow us to use the 10 gig connection, but ultimately, if we wanted to use two of these, we would need a different solution, maybe a dual switch or something like that. And it's also worth bearing in mind that your upload and download speed is also going to need to be sky high to fully saturate the SSD's bandwidth if you want to access this remotely. And even then, assuming we've got everything set up correctly, all of the hardware to make it work, just getting a new 1TB PCI Gen 4 drive that probably cost about 60 quid on Amazon will still massively outperform it, saving loads of cost if you just don't need the availability or the redundancy. I'm aware though that I'm probably starting to sound a little bit scary and making this seem very complicated, but again, remember it's not very straightforward to set up, but it does come with advanced features that advanced users can use but the main thing really is that it's flexible and scalable if you don't need high-speed connections you just want to back up some music some photos some videos anything like that then just a basic solution will be absolutely fine unfortunately though the negativity list doesn't stop there because other downsides include the need to physically house a new box somewhere with ventilation in your home obviously the power cost that could well be 100 pound a year depending on the solution that you go for and of course you still retain the need for an off-site backup to protect against fire flood, theft, anything like that. Oh, and of course, whilst you can't always just add another drive to your NAS at any time, this only works if you physically have a spare bay available and your RAID array actually lets you add another drive. Not to mention the annoyance of paying money for redundant storage that you're never actually going to see. But before everyone goes away scratching their head more confused than before they started, let's tie this up in a nice neat and tidy bow. Do you personally need a NAS? And honestly, the answer is no if you either don't use much storage, probably a terabyte or significantly less, and maybe there's just not that much stuff in your life that you need backed up. 
The point at which it's definitely worth considering a NAS though, is if you have more than one user in the home and want to share images, files, videos between the household, and either want the offline capabilities, the fast read and write speeds, or are starting to use a decent amount of storage in the cloud and don't want to get yourself locked into a subscription. And then finally, you need a NAS if you have multiple terabytes of storage, especially if it's dotted across multiple drives, removable drives, old drives, and obviously you need something more modern and something that's just a lot more accessible. It's also worth bearing in mind as well that if you have slow internet, then having a NAS could be way, way faster for your backups and potentially mean that you don't have to leave your PC on all the time uh, to do its backing up. So there's definitely a lot of things to think about. Consider what and how you're storing very, very carefully. If anything went wrong, how would you feel? It really is a good idea to make the switch before you run into problems, especially if you've been sitting on a hard drive or SSD for a while now. Remember, can those memories really be replaced? Realistically, there is no one-size-fits-all solution, and the best approach is multiple approaches. So for example, I'd say most people, anything that they need to access quickly, if you're playing games for instance, you want to have a decent amount of storage in your PC that you can quickly access. But everything else really is going to go on the NAS. This is what's going to be accessible, as I say, anywhere and everywhere, but you've just got much more storage. You won't have any horrible hard drive noise in your system. It can be away in a cupboard somewhere as long as it's got ventilation. And then anything that is properly mission critical, as I say, birth of your child, anything really that you can't afford to lose, that can be on the NAS and backed up in either an off-site solution or a cloud solution as well. I will also add that I have brushed over all of the other cool features that you can do with a NAS as they're a little bit boring. But for example, you can easily set up a cloud sync so PC files go straight to the NAS and then to the cloud. You can set up media shares for watching videos on your TV and crucially, user access. And this one is very personal to me. Essentially what this means is that you can either deny access so people can't see certain areas or certain folders of the NAS. Uh, you can give them read-only access so that they could see it but can't like delete or change anything or obviously full read and write access and then it just works like a normal hard drive essentially where they just use their portion of the drive essentially but the reason that this is personal to me is because i didn't set any of that up for my father and when i gave him access to the family nas and i put all of the family photos on there I set it to read write access for everyone and then one day just by accident he uh, managed to delete all of the family photos from I think it was 2005 to 2011 because he was getting a new computer and even though I told him to take the hard drive out and destroy it or at the very least do a proper format on it uh, he decided to go in and literally just like delete every file he could see on his old iMac and he didn't realize that one of those folders was the network drive so that was fun oh and that was a little bit depressing wasn't it can I really end the video on that I think I can. User access is important, regardless of whether it's a NAS or computer or anything. But I really hope this video has been helpful. If it has, do smash that like button. It really helps out. Obviously, get yourself subscribed. And if you are interested in a NAS, any of the drives we used, SSDs, and obviously the NAS itself, we'll leave a load of recommendations at different price points with our affiliate links down below so you can get browsing and hopefully choose something that's right for you. But thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.